Yeah, I think we meet once more for the practicals we had promised. Uh, we did the motor connection circuits, so we are going to briefly go through over them in a more practical way with the assistance of uh, Mr. Joseph who did the actual connections. So here we have assembled all the components that you may be needing. Now if you look at my diagrams, the one I had given you, I had indicated uh, here the switch and the fuses, and also the fuse for the control circuit. These are control circuits, this is the power circuit here. Now, in our demonstration to you, we have got a slight uh, amendment in that we have got MCBs instead of uh, the switches and uh, the fuses. So the MCB here is acting as a, is a combination of the protective devices and also the switching mechanism. Now, of course, when you are starting, the whole thing should be off, when you start, I think as you know the off is the down, the up is the on. So in this case here, this will be presenting our three faces. At the moment, we don't have the three faces in the classrooms here. Later on, we shall actually have the proper circuit with the motor. So we have our three phase circuits here. If I may briefly go over the power circuit. The three phase circuits here, they come in here and they come out on the lower side. And then they go to number one, uh, two, three, and five. And then there is the overload, which is directly connected to our contactor. And then from there, it goes down to our motor. Here we have got lamps simply to indicate for us that the circuit is continuous when we do our operation. So that is the power circuit. Now the choice of your MCB will depend on your motor setting. That means, like this one is a C32 ampere, that means it can carry, supposed to handle 32 amperes. So depending on the motor you're having, if you're using the MCB, then you choose it appropriately. So that is for the power circuit. Through the contactor contacts, when they will make, then through the overload and down onto the motor. In our case, we're having lamps to indicate when our light comes on. And then since we're having lamps, single phase, back to the neutral. We have also connected an indicator here in the control circuit. Well, let's briefly go now. That is the power circuit. Now let's briefly go to the control circuit. In our control circuit, we do tap our power from one of the lines, and then we have got a protection for our control circuit. In this one we are using a C C6, I think the smallest MCB you have in the market. And then from C6, it comes over to our overload contacts. So from here, here we have got a CB, the C6 here, 
we go to the overload contacts, which are 95 and 96, 95 and 96, and then from there we go to the stop button, terminal number one. And then on the other side, we have got terminal number two, which is connected to our start push button number three, and then to the hold on contacts number 13 and 14. So from the stop push button, we come on to our start push button, whereby one end is connected to number 13 to provide our hold on contact, and then on the other side, the other one is connected to number 14. So this will have the hold on when you start and release this push button here. These are normally open contact. When you press it, it will close. The contactor will be energized. Then this 13 and 14 will provide a parallel path between this one and the start push button so that when the start push button is released, there is that path through 13 and 14. We normally refer to it as the hold on contact. And then on the lower side, of our start push button, we go on to, of our start push button put between number four, we go on to our A2, uh, A1, sorry, of our contactor. And then on the A2 side, we got our neutral. And then our neutral, A2 here for our neutral. And then we have got an indicator to tell us that the contactor is energized. Now, in this circuit here, as I told you earlier, now this is for demonstration purposes or for examination purposes. Normally in industry, well, what you can demonstrate is that this contactor can be de-energized and our indicator can show that the motor is, sorry, the contactor is running. That is the problem we're having around here. Now, this indicator here is connected to A1 and also to A2. So it's in parallel with our contactor coil. So in case the contactor coil is supposed to, to burn, you can see that we have got a path for our indicator. The indicator can show that the contactor is energized, whereas it is not. So in this circuit here, as where I said now in industry, they have got some provision, additional contacts, which usually a contact to actually state to test that this one is actually energized. And of course, in case it goes off, this contact here will not be available, then this one will go off. So there is a slight arrangement, improvement in industry by the addition of that contact there, so that in case of the coil here burning, your indicator does not come on. As you can see, it's wired in parallel. And then that completes our uh, control circuit. We go back to the neutral. So, as I said, when you press, this one is normally open, you press it. When we press it, this one is energized. These contacts here will close. Once they close, number 13 and 14 will be in parallel with the number three and four. And then when you release this one here, the number 13 and 14 is the one which will make our contactor coil to be continuously energized. And then when you want to stop, you simply press in your stop push button. When you stop your push button, you interfere with the hold-on coil for the AC. Remember, in AC, we interrupt the hold-on coil, whereas for the DC, we normally short the contacts. So briefly, that is the theory, and this is our practical. Now for the motor connection circuits, we have simply connected lamps here to show that when this one is energized, to indicate that it's actually on. Otherwise, these ones are the ones which will be going to the motor connection circuits, and remember for the DOL, if you have the motor here, now this is where we'll be having the power connections, and these ones here will be shorted. Actually, in this case here, in the actual field, you have to do that connection yourself to provide the star point. This is for the motor terminals. We shall get the motor sometimes later on. So that briefly explains the practicals that you should know. In your next examination, apart from the theory, you also expected to know how to wire this one. So I think we can have a go and see whether uh, Mr. Joseph did the wiring correctly. So we start off by connecting the power. Now when you switch on, you have a phase tester. Our power should be available 
when we switch on our power, it should be available to all these terminals here and up to the start push button number three. So with a face tester, I think it's okay, our power should be available. It's all showing red and up to number, uh, up to the start push button number three. It should be, no, this one insertion is not very, it's not very good. We can check it on number. On the software. Okay, okay. So in this case here, we can test <laughs> the contactor contacts are the ones where the power is available up to this point here with your face tester. Normally, one thing I recommend, when you have a face tester, you better keep it to yourself. Eh? Sometimes you can lend it to somebody and they might replace inside, maybe with eye or something. When you test, you get a shock. So this one should be kind of personal if you're in the industry. Or you can simply also use your meter. So for the power, I think we are okay. Now for our control, when we switch this one on, and then the power should be available all the way to the start push button. When this one is on, we are tapping from the lower side of our MCB. The power should be available up to that point, which is number three of our start push button or number 13. I think number 13 is the one which is easily available here. You can see the light there. Eh? So that one has got a light. Or you can simply use a multimeter for the testing. So now we are ready to go. Of course, it was tested before. That's why I'm not keen on testing each and every thing. It was tested before it, it works. So when you want to start, if there is a motor, there are the issue high regulations in case the moving parts are uh, outside, they should be, there should be wire mesh protection. So I start by pushing in my start push button. So this one, the contacts here make, and the power goes on to the motor. In this case, we are having our bulbs. The contactor is energized. I've got my indicator there, and I've raised my push button. The number 13 and 14 is the one which is providing the hold on contact for my contactor. And then when I want to stop, I simply push my stop push button and the power is off. The push button here will simply interfere with the hold on contact for my contactor coil. Now the same stoppage can be, to, can be due to a power failure. And one of the regulations is that the motor should not be able to restart in case the power comes on. So in our case here, you can see from the diagram, in case there was a power failure, that means this one would be on. We'll simulate a power failure. This one will be connected, that one connected, uh, that one connected. So in case there was a power failure and then the power comes back, we can see that the motor cannot actually start because now this one here is open. This one here is open. The contactor is de-energized. So the motor has to be restarted again by pressing our start push button. So any uh, connections we make for motors, any circuits, we must ensure they conform to our IEE regulations. So this, the theory we did, that's a little bit of the practicals. And uh, in case of any comments, send them online. Right, so the start, it starts, and then if you want to stop, you can stop. Now we said in industry sometimes, uh, the workshop might be big, and then maybe you have got an operator next to this machine here, motor, depending on what the motor is doing, at times you may need other facilities of stopping this motor, other various points where the motor can be stopped. In case there's a problem with the operator here, somebody notices you should be able to stop the motor from a remote area. Now when that happens, when that happens, we need to do our rewiring here. And what we simply do is we simply, in our uh, control circuit, we add in those other additional stop, push, buttons.
we break in our control circuit and we add in additional stop buttons. So this, this stop button may be at the machine and this one here may be remote somewhere, maybe the supervisor or maybe at the door and you can have several of these ones here. The only thing to remember is that this stop push button sometimes they can be faulty so to require maybe a constant checking after one or two three months you check the contacts whether they are okay so you can have additional push buttons in our control circuit of course in this one's here i've got this one's here for my stop push button i can start this one here i can stop with this one here and there's also this one here now this one is connected is the one which is actually operating this uh, bit here the overload contact here. When I push that button, it simply opens up these buttons here. The same mechanism which is operated by the thermal overload. So there's a provision for the menu. So this one can also be used as a stop push button. And I'll tend to think uh, that's more or less what there is all to it. The other thing you need to remember is that in our overload, as I said earlier, you can set the current at which you want it to trip. Now when it trips, it is the yellow button here which will come out. And when it trips, you simply push it back to reset. So depending on the size of the motor, then you need to set the value of your current. On this blue button here, you simply rotate it. There is this triangle here which you set at the current you want the overload to trip. I think that's the only additional thing I think I'd kind of uh, forgotten. Of course, this one can also serve as a stop push button. Again, the contactor should be rated for the motor that we are going to work on. And of course, this one is working on 450, I mean 240 volts. And as I told you, the Chinese, they don't operate their control. Uh, their contactors on 240, they operate from DC, either 12 volts or 24 volts, again, safety measures. I think that there is a division of labor. Somebody handles the control circuit, another one handles the power circuit, creating employment. Here, when you train you in your mod modular courses, or the NITA courses, you should be able to handle both. Both, so there's no, currently there's no need to separating the DC, lower voltage, and the 240 volts. Everything works on 240. Size of our cables, again, they have a bearing on the motor loading. The same with this ones here. But here is we have kind of uh, fabricated for you to have a look, to see what happens. And of course, we have tried to keep up with the code. Where there is power, the cabling is all red, and the neutral is all black, back to the neutral, and back to the power supply system. That other course for the NITA, the one which uh, Jemsha Ilan is going to introduce, all this you should be able to connect and wire and do the testing. Okay.